Hello and welcome to Politicals on City TV. This morning we are coming to you from the foyer of Parliament House in Accra. Reason being, there's a crucial vote that we saw on Thursday which has determined when we are going to go to the polls here in the country. You know, 2016 is an election year. We have been looking forward to voting on November 7, but that has since been overthrown by a vote in the House of Parliament. My name is Umar Osanda Ahmad and I'm joined uh, on the show this morning by the Honorable Obi Amor, he's the MPP MP for Ekapim South and also the Chairperson of Parliament's Subsidiary Legislation Committee. You are welcome. Thank you. We have been expecting to vote on November 7. All of us, the political parties, IPAC, and then you betrayed us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, thankfully, Parliament has done what the public expected. At the last forum by the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, almost everybody who spoke said that November 7 is okay, but not for this year. Religious leaders, Christian Muslim, most of the political parties, the civil society organizations, everybody said November 7 is okay, but not for this year. So if Parliament has rejected November 7, that means Parliament has spoken the minds of all those who represent us in Ghana. On the whole, it could be seen as Parliament doing the rejection. But when you go to the fine details, it was the NPP, the New Patriotic Party, that rejected November 7. You voted overwhelmingly against the adoption of the date. Well, uh, if you look at the votes, NPP, we have 122 members. And then if you look at the NDC, NDC has 148 plus independent and other minor parties. The votes will tell you that we didn't have 122 saying no and you didn't have 148 saying yes. So that should tell you that it's parliament. And I can tell you on an authority, a lot of NDC MPs who told me personally that they were not comfortable with November 7 for various reasons, either the EC not being ready or even the circumstances and the situation in their constituencies. So let's talk about the reasons, so aside what the NDC MPs told you, for which they decided to maybe vote in support of your, your motion. Why did the NPP and Bloc decide that we are not ready for November 7? Well, the vote, the vote was secret, but obviously you shouldn't be surprised if the majority of MPP members said no. And it's, it's not just in the vacuum. We canvass reasons for saying no, especially given the fact that we wanted to see how ready the Electoral Commission was. If we want to help the Electoral Commission in Ghana, then it's only fair that we give them more days for them to be able to deliver. As we speak, the regulations on elections, which we have to use for 2016, the regulations are still before Parliament. We have to count 21 sitting days before they become law. As to the provisions of the regulations, what we need to do, what the Electoral officers need to do, we have to wait for the law to pass before they train their own officers before they meet certain deadlines in the CI, before they get enough funding for procurement, etc. And I believe that if EC will be sincere with itself, one more month for preparation will give them better preparation than just bringing it to November. So it's, it's the, for the good of the country. Why you seem to, seeming to be crying more than the bereaved? The Electoral Commission, through its chairperson, has come out to say to us, that they are fully ready, they had no challenge. And indeed, if you see the statement that they issued subsequent to your vote, they well, said, the, well, the they were ready, yeah, despite that, you the still The Electoral Commission doesn't them. operate in a vacuum, and they do operate for themselves. So it's not we crying more than the bereaved. It takes two to tango. You need a referee in the middle for a match to take place. If the referee is not on the pitch, the match cannot take off. And if the referee, if the referee tells me he's ready, the match is in Accra and the referee is now in Tamale, he has to travel to Accra. I have to check whether within the hours, the beginning of the match, he'll be able to come for the match to take off. So it's not just for the referee assuring me, I'm ready. Where are you? I'm ready, but where's your destination? Miles away from the, the venue of the match. That is when what you, is happening. When, when the MPP says the referee is not ready, and the referee here is the Electoral Commission, yes. why do you say they're not ready? One major thing is that they, their law is not ready. The law that they will use to govern the lessons. The law to guide the lessons. The law that they will use to govern the lessons. The CI 94 that has been placed in Parliament. It's not ready. That's number one. Two, if you look at the timelines, if you are fair to the average citizen who has a right to vote, and you tell me that in your law, 60 days, less than 60 days before the lessons, such a person can register but he cannot vote, and you want to bring your calendar, lesson date, to November, and we are in July going to August, 
It means you are going to ensure that a lot of people who have the opportunity to even register and vote may not have that opportunity. And how fair is that? Your own law, you are telling me that 60 days before elections, if a person registers, he cannot vote. Between now and December, we have more days than between now and November. So I'm even fair to the average person who is now seeking to get registered to be able to vote. Number two, your law, own law is saying that 42 days before election, you cannot do proxy voting. Or if you want to do proxy voting, it has to be 42 days before elections. If you want to transfer votes, 42 days before elections. And if you want to do special voting, you have to apply 42 days before election. If you, you open nomination in the middle of September, all these things that you want to do, you need to do them when you have a certified register. And you have given these certified registers to the political parties that your law requires. And if you have not done all these things, how do you expect me to agree that you are ready? At what point did the NPP realize that the Electoral Commission is not ready? Because we have been told that this process has begun since 2015. And indeed, you at IPAC were the lead advocate for us to vote on November 7th. Indeed, if you listened to me yesterday on the floor, it's not even too accurate to say that this process started in 2015. As far back as 2011, the Constitution Review Commission had gone around the country soliciting views and then they had put in their report that they believed that 60 days before the handover, if we were to hold presidential and parliamentary elections, it would be suitable for the country. So that is known. And the white people of the government also endorsed these findings. So this is known. So if it's known, it's for the government and the Attorney General to start the processes in the Constitution so that these things will be carried out. You don't wait for the last moment and then when you look at the verifiable situations, the EC is not ready, and you say that 2015, Ghanaians accepted it, so let's move forward. We have to analyze and look at the facts on the ground and see whether changing the date would be that helpful. They will do it. Why are you engrossed in transition when you are not prepared for the election itself? What is the purpose of transition? But you do the purpose of transition is to have elections so that governments may stay or governments may change. So if your, your framework for the elections itself is problematic, why are you interested in transition? But you do reckon that we need a longer time for the transition. And 2012 and 2008, 2008 rather has shown us that we need a longer period. Because you know when we went for the rerun in 20, on 28th December, then we had to go to another constituency for a and the lesson, election. I, I have and said that the lesson that we that learned is not the only the change of date. That should be the solution. As we speak, we have an amendment to Transition Act. What has happened to the amendment? It's still locked up at the committee level. And if you say you want a smooth transition, why is it that a law that you are using to back it, you have not even found it suitable to pass it? And you think that just changing dates should be able to ensure smooth transition. You can do elections three months before handing over. If you don't have the legal framework, you can still go wrong. So Parliament has held Ghanaians to ransom? Not, not at all. Because the, subsidia, the, the transition uh, the law on transition which you refer to is before your house. It is not for us. We, the ordinary people, are during the public whoever, uh, constitutional amendments. Whoever sponsored that bill should also assist in making sure that the bill leaves the committee and comes to the floor for us to debate and move to a consultation stage and then pass it if it's suitable for the president to also assent to it. If your only uh, solution is that let's change this, you have smooth transition. I don't agree. I don't believe in that. What indeed, do you say? Indeed, if it's only about handing over, you should know that whether you, what, whatever you do, the constitution is saying that by 7 January you should hand over. So whether elections or not, you should start preparing to hand over. To, to hand over either to yourself or to the party which will come. Whether, whether you like it or not, 7 January there should be a swearing in. So counting three months back, if you're reasonable, you say that three months before even the swearing in, there should be steps to make sure that either I stay on, but I, will, I may even change my cabinet, or I leave for another government, so I should be ready. It's just like staying in a property and the landlord tells you that by 7 January, quit. You have to put that property in a tenable manner so that whoever comes to stay in that property would be assured that he has a good place to stay.
You know, we wait to the last day and say that I'm waiting for lesson one, round off, or probably third round before I think of handing over. That is poor administration. What do you say to critics who say the vote on the floor was a retaliatory vote to show that the EC cannot continue to be obstinate to demands by the NPP for reforms and other issues that you've been calling for? The, in the first place, the EC is not for any party. The EC is for the state. Number two, there's nothing to retaliate against the EC. If we are not in any competition with the EC, they have been put there as independent body to run our elections. But that doesn't mean when things are going wrong, we cannot talk about it. And that doesn't mean that when we don't agree with you on a situation, it means we are retaliating. We retaliate for what? We, 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 it's not necessary, we don't need it. Or is it. Or is it that you needed more time because you don't have the required funding, so you wanted more time till December before you could, well, you could start this, your campaign? This is just speculation and conjecture. The, the, the most important thing is on election day and see who is prepared. As for those who want to um, play to the gallery, Oh, we are ready, they are not ready. Your referee is not on the pitch and you say you are ready. Go and play. Go and play and win without a referee. If they say they are ready for 7 November, they should go and vote on 7 November. The rest of the country will go and vote on December 7. So it's not just a matter of saying I'm ready. You are not the only player. So you can't say I'm ready and then all of us should accept it. There are rules and regulations. And we should learn. That's, it's as if this country we never learn. In 2012, in 2012, regulations for elections came at the end of September. How many months before elections? When we went to the field, even the EC officials didn't know the law. We want to go through the same thing again and then complain after. It's as if we never learn. I believe that if we give one more month to the Electoral Commission, it will help them prepare better. If we have better and credible elections, as for the transition, we will manage it. After all, we've managed transitions since 1992. For people who want to vote on November 7, is there any other chance for them that there's a possibility or that is the end? That, of the, that, that, is, that is the sad aspect of it. We should gazette this amendment on two occasions, three months apart, before it comes to Parliament for first reading and it is sent to Council of State. Council of State has within 30 days to also respond and bring it back to Parliament. So where are they going to have the three months? for us to come back to the same thing. Assuming they had done it last year, and there were problems, and they want to relay it, they want to bring it back to us, they could still have had the constitutional time space to deal with. Now they don't have it. And who do you blame? Thank you very much, Dionobo Obiyama. <laughs> Dionobo Obiyama is the MPP MP for Ikiapim South. He's also the chairperson of Parliament's Subsidiary Legislation Committee. And he joined us on Politicals here on City TV. Thank you so much for having time to view our program and thank you Honorable Obiyama for being on the show. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadu. Do catch us next week here on City TV.